Today's Spotlight is brought to you in part by presenting sponsor, First Community Financial Bank. The community bank where you come first. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm your host, Jay Mournette. And I'm joined now by Dr. Bill Walsh and Sue Hanegraaff from the Walsh Research Institute. So welcome. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. It's thank you. nice to have you because this is a new uh, group. We have not spoken with you before, so we're always excited to learn about new not-for-profits. Dr. Walsh, tell us a little bit about how you started the Institute and why you started it right here in Naperville. Well, the Institute really started uh, with a volunteer program right here in, in Naperville with neighbor, several Naperville churches and Argonne National Laboratory. I was working at Argonne for a while and as a very young man, many years ago, got interested in, um, in, in trying to do something to reduce crime and violence in, in, in the world. And I thought if I could make any, any kind of an impact, the way to do this would be to go straight to people most likely to commit a crime. So we started a prison volunteer program at Stateville Penitentiary. And we had uh, literally dozens of Naperville citizens and people at Argonne going and just doing the normal things that prison volunteers do. And but I think everything started for me, uh, my real education started when we did an ex-offender program and tried to help people as they were leaving prisons and got to meet the, uh, the families that had produced a violent criminal. And what I learned really surprised me. I learned that many of these families seemed to be wonderful families, caring, capable families with other children who turned out just fine. And they said this one child was different from the time they were one year old. And yeah. children that were doing things that horrified them by the time they were three and four years old. And I began to wonder, is there some kind of a predisposition to violence? And at being at Argonne with all these researchers, we started to do, do some scientific studies. We started taking urine samples and blood samples and, and tissue samples, looking to see if they were in any way different in their chemistry. And we did find a lot. We found that they were born different and that the, they had uh, differences that, that have a lot to do with brain function. Okay. So that's how it started. Wow, that is, that's fascinating. And, and so how did you keep going with that? So what was your next step? So you found out that there was a difference. What was yes. the next step? Well, we found that a lot of them had metal metabolism disorders, that a lot of them had problems with copper and zinc. And it seemed like most criminals were sky high in nasty toxics like lead and mercury and cadmium. And uh, I, I had the good fortune to connect with the world's leading nutrient scientist, Dr. Carl Pfeiffer from Princeton, New Jersey. He got interested in my work and I learned everything from him. We worked together for 12 years and we eventually I started sending him criminals fresh out of prison and studying their chemistry. And he, he had developed nutrient therapy programs for, for, for schizophrenics and he was an expert in normalizing body chemistry and brain chemistry without using drugs. Interesting. So to make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying. So as you looked at that, what you were saying is the, the predisposition for this violent or criminal behavior was very much around the nutrients that were in our brains. Yes, and so my first attempt was to try to turn these ex-convicts into pussycats. <laughs> <laughs> so How did that, that work out? <laughs> actually, we've never succeeded. We've done hundreds of them. And what usually happened is, is they, they would... Most of them said that they were dramatically better for maybe six or eight months, and then a few years later I'd find out they were back in prison. And what had happened is they, they, they didn't continue the treatment. Okay. But we, what we really learned was that if we got violent children, children with the same chemistry, the same tendencies, the future criminals, we, tended to, we, we, we did more than 10,000 of them over, over the period that we've been doing this. And most of the families report that not only do they get better, most of them, but that it, it's enduring. And so by 1990, we, we, our focus has been totally on children for behavior disorders. Okay, so as long as, if I'm understanding again, as long as they maintain the treatment to make sure that they're balanced. So you can sort of, you're cutting it off before it sort of, they, they get off the uh, path, if you will, but then you've got to stay consistent because their basic body makeup can, would naturally go in a different way. That's exactly right. Okay. Fascinating, fascinating. So now what are you doing at the Walsh Institute now? Well, after, while we were doing all these, these violent behavior disordered kids, uh, we, we noticed something else. We got reports from the family that a lot of these children had learning disabilities and ADHD. 
and, and that they were dramatically better after doing the same treatment. So that, that's when we learned we could also help people with ADHD. And, and we've now seen more than 5,000 cases of children with ADHD, and, and our outcome studies show that we can help generally 80 to 85% of them. And uh, eventually, uh, we started a clinic in, right near, near Naperville, and uh, actually the first one was in Wheaton, and uh, then, one in Wheat, then one in Naperville and one in Warrenville, and we eventually saw 30,000 patients and, and expanded it to, to autism. At one time, we had seen more autistics than anybody in the world. We saw more than 6,500 families with, with the heartbreak of autism. And so we've done a lot of research on autism and developing treatments for them. But I think the biggest, um, recently, the, the most excitement has been on depression. Mm. We've just, we have the world's biggest chemistry database for depression. We've seen more than 3,600 people with clinical depression. And we believe that uh, psychiatry basically is doing depression all wrong. They have a misconception where they think depression is, uh, is a sort of a single entity, namely low serotonin activity. Okay. And, um, and all their therapies are aimed at that in general. That's a, that, with, with a few variations. What our, what, what our database says is that no, that there are, that depression is an umbrella term that encompasses at least five completely different disorders with different neurotransmitters that are misbehaving and each one needing, needing a different treatment. I presented that at the annual meeting of the APA, the American Psychiatric Association, the big meeting of the year for the world psychiatrists, 17,000 psychiatrists in a big building in New York. That's a little bit scary in and of itself. <laughs> and, I, and I presented this information and told them basically that uh, there are simple, inexpensive blood tests they can give to a, a patient uh, see a, a person with depression, okay. and and uh, for just a few hundred dollars, they can identify which neurotransmitters have gone wrong, and it can guide them to which medication to give them, whether to give an SSRI or a benzodiazepine, but even more importantly, that they can they can have a good chance of fixing the problem with nutrients, and so uh, we've now got a. Um, an international training program. We're now training doctors around the world in these nutrient therapies that, that can have real power in, in, in overcoming brain problems. That's amazing. So when you think about the work that you, I mean, you've obviously done a huge amount of research, and now what you really are is you've done that research and you're out there in the world educating so that others can yeah. learn about this and then apply that to the patients that they're seeing. Right, so more individuals are helped. So we have over 500 physicians all over the world um, that have been trained in Dr. Walsh's protocols. Okay. And here in the United States, we have over 250. And in fact, we have about 15 here in the state of Illinois. There's four in DuPage County. They'll be interesting for your NCTV viewers. And um, we continue to have workshops here in the United States. We hold them in the Chicago area. In fact, our next physician education workshop is going to be held in April 2018 um, here in Oak Brook. So, um, and every time we have a workshop, Dr. Walsh, we have what? More people. More people, right. Yeah. And in fact, we've, I've been training doctors now for 15 years. And we've trained more than half of the, of the 500 in the last three years. Yes, That's it's great. just and, growing and growing. And are you seeing are you seeing more interest from the physicians, or you're just seeing more because we're seeing more and more cases of some of those behavioral disorders and depression and those kinds of things? Which no, it's the it's really the doc. A lot of the doctors tell us that that uh, it's we've changed their life with respect to what their what their mm -hmm. uh, clinical methods are. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and it's it's really that it's it's like they see a new way to help a patient. That's fantastic. That's and also, fantastic. you know, the movement of, of individuals who become more knowledgeable for their loved ones or their family members that are hurt. So they, they know that there might be other options. And so they bring it to the attention of their doctor. And the doctor may have heard something. And, and so they look into us. And um, we just, like Dr. Walsh said, we've had so many very, very excited uh, doctors, especially here in the United States and really around the world, that are just thrilled about what they're learning and how they can change medicine at their practice. And clearly help every individual yes. client that comes yeah. in the door, so in and a another, different way. And I'm yeah. finding that the most, the, most, the most enthusiastic doctors are the psychiatrists. Yes, yeah. yes. So instead of just spending maybe a half an hour with a new patient trying to decide what, what drug or what will we give him, they can actually do some, some uh, inexpensive lab work and have a roadmap to how to really help them, whether they use drugs or, or nutrients. That's wonderful. 
Well, listen, I thank you for coming on and for sharing this information. I think it's fascinating. So exciting that it started right here in Naperville. And obviously, you've done a lot of very important work to kind of get us yes. to this point. So uh, look forward to continuing to hear more about that. So thank you. Thank, well, thank you, you very Jane. much, Jane. If you would like to find out more about Nutrient Therapy and the Walsh Research Institute, please go and visit their website. We're going to take a quick break for a few short messages. Stay tuned. We're coming right back.